The following video contains footage that some people may find offensive or upsetting. This is made for review purposes. I apologize in advance in the subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, I guess it's time to get serious. <laughs> This is your path to be We're all here just for all the fun Now you're jamming, jamming hard, yeah Heartbeat up all once again Turn it, heartbeat it up Now you're jamming, jamming hard, yeah Heartbeat up all once again Turn it, heartbeat up Alright guys back for another retrospective this time round and instead of doing another Capcom title or anything else of the sort I thought we'd go down a more serious route and talk about another game in another series by Rockstar Games and no, before anyone asks, I'm not going to be talking about Bully, I'm not going to be talking about Red Dead Redemption or GTA for that matter although that probably might come up as a subject for a later video in the, f in the possible future I decided we'd talk about what I would consider a Rockstar game that doesn't get talked about enough anymore and yes obviously I am talking about the original Manhunt but before we go into that though I want you guys to make sure you guys like comment subscribe hit that notifications bell so you guys will be up to date on everything that I upload onto the channel and without further ado let's get straight into it so for those of you who'd want to know Manhunt also known as Manhunt the Final Cut is a stealth based survival horror video game published by Rockstar Games known for GTA uh, Bully and Red Dead Redemption Originally released for the PlayStation 2 in November 2003 and for the Microsoft Windows and Xbox in April 2004, set within the fictional city of Carcer City, the story follows James Earl Cash, a death row prisoner who is forced to participate in a series of snuff films, earning his freedom by murdering the criminal gang members that sent to hunt him down on camera. Uh, there will also we this video will also talk about a real subject a real actual controversial subject matter revolving around this game so fair warning for those of you who are easily disturbed or for those of you who are connected personally or who are affected personally by this incident as well within this video uh, the game was also received positive reviews from critics and won several accolades with particular praise um, directed at its dark and gritty tone and violent gameplay Although the combat and level design were criticised, Manhunt was subject to significant video game controversy in the early 2000s uh, due to the level of video game or video graphic violence depicted, and it was banned in several countries and implicated in a murder in the UK by the UK media. Although this accusation was later re was years later rejected by the police and courts, while not a commercial hit, Manhunt did also develop a substantial cult following and was followed up by a standalone sequel, Manhunt 2, in 2007. Uh, the game was then re-released through the PlayStation Network for the PlayStation 3 in 2013, and then re-released again on the PlayStation 4 uh, online store in 2016. I don't know if it's available for, um, for the PlayStation 5 store, but if anyone that actually owns a PS5, actually let me know in case you guys do know. <laughs> so, we're going to go talking about the development of the game first, so that way you guys know you get a little bit of a rough whereabouts on the game's overall development. So, Rockstar North uh, began development of Manhunt in the early to mid 90s, uh, building the game uh, with the renderware engine that had been used for the Grand Theft Auto for the early Grand Theft Auto titles. In September 2003, Game Master published a preview of Manhunt, uh, commenting Rockstar North has scrapped yeah, has scrapped its imagination, not scrapped, has scraped its imagination to further twist the way that games are made in the future, and the villains are chiseled, no apologies, assault on the gaming and standards. It possesses a warped subtlety uh, the, uh, that questions reality. It creates a barren, harsh, violent experience, and then punctures it with something trippy and darkly comic. In a retrospective piece, a former Rockstar employee admitted that the game almost caused a mutiny 
in the company saying that the team had already weathered plenty of controversy over GTA 3 and Vice City at the time. Uh, we are no strangers by quoting that they are no strangers to it, but Manhunt felt different. With GTA we, all, we always had the excuse that the gameplay was untethered, that you had to be hurt, that you had to hurt not anybody that wasn't a bad guy. In one of the missions you could play completely ethically if you wanted to, and the game was a parody anyway, so lighten up. Uh, Manhunt was announced at E3 in May 2003, and the game was originally slated for an October release date, but it was eventually released for the PlayStation 2 on November 19th, 2003 in North America, which then followed by a European release on November 21st. Uh, during its first month, month of the game's of sales, the game sold 75 million, uh, not 75 million, 75,000 copies in the United States alone. A fraction of the copies sold by Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Games were also distributed by Rockstar in spite of these um, comparatively poor sales. The game received a port for the Windows and the Xbox, which released in North America on April 20th, 2004, and in Europe, April 23rd. Rockstar then ex uh, released exclusive merchandise limited editions and a pre-order bonuses such as official soundtracks, a pigsy figure and a handheld voice chart, uh, voice changer. Uh, the game was also added to Steam in January 2008 and Manhunt inclu uh, was included for free uh, for players who pre-ordered the PC version of Manhunt 2 in November 2009. On May 14th, 2013, Manhunt was made available for purchase on the PlayStation 3 under the PlayStation Network's PS2 Classics category. And it was also released again for the PlayStation 4 in, two, in March 22nd, 2016, with 1080p quality and trophy support as well. So, without all of that, we're also now going to be talking about the gameplay of Manhunt. Manhunt is a stealth game that, um, that is played in a third-person perspective, and the game consists of a total of 20 levels called scenes in the game, as well as 4 unlockable bonus scenes. Players survive the uh, scenes by dispatching enemy gang members occasionally with firearms, but primarily stealthy, uh, by stealthily executing them. At the end of each scene, players are then graded based on their performance and awarded 1 to 5 stars. Unlockable content becomes available when the player achieves 3 or more stars on a certain number of levels. On normal difficulty, called fetish in the game, players can only earn up to 4 stars. One is awarded for completing the scene, under a certain amount of time, and 1 to 3 stars are awarded based on the brutality of the executions carried out during the scene. Uh, on hard difficulty, called Hardcore in the game, players are graded on, on five st out of 5 stars, 1 for speed, 1 to 3 for brutality, and 1 for completing the scene. Uh, to gain the maximum number of stars, a set number of brutal executions must be carried out over the course of the scene, but face-to-face -face fighting does not actually allow you to earn stars in the game overall. Uh, to carry out executions, players must approach a hunter from behind, undetected, to utilize this. Uh, to utilize this, each scene is filled with dark spots, shadows where the player can hide, and enemies cannot see in these shadows unless, the unless they actually see the player entering the area. A standard technique in the game is to hide in the shadows and tap a wall to, to attract the attention of, nearby of a nearby hunter. When the hunter is examined. Yeah, when he's examining the area and is moved and is moving away, the players can then easily ambush them and execute them. Uh, the game has three levels of execution, uh, with each level progressively getting more violent and graphic than the last. You got hasty executions, which are quick, not very bloody, and then you got violent, which are considerably more gory. And then you got gruesome, which are over-the-top, blood-soaked murders. Players are also take control of the level in which they can use. Uh, the players, once they're locked onto an enemy, the lock-on reticle changes colour over time to indicate the three levels, white, yellow and red. Uh, over the course uh, of the game, the players can also use a wide variety of weapons including plastic bags, baseball bats, crowbars, a variety of bladed items, and later in the game, firearms are available for use when executions become more impractical. Uh, should players take damage, um, yeah, their health depletes, and health can be restored in the game through the use of painkillers, which are available throughout each scene in the game. Players also do have a stamina meter, which depletes as they sprint automatically, but replenishes when they're remaining stationary. Manhunt also uses the PlayStation 2's optional USB microphone and the original Xbox's live, um, yeah, the Xbox Live microphone feature on the original Xbox in their respective versions of the game. 
Uh, when such a device is connected, players can also use the sound of their own voice to distract in-game enemies. This adds an extra element to the stealth uh, aspect of the game, as players also refrain from making noises such as coughing, as these sounds do often to attract the attention of nearby hunters. Then we've got the overall setting of the game. Manhunt is set in the fictional Castle City, a ruined uh, Rust Belt uh, city ripe with corruption and crime. On the prowl around the city are numerous violent gangs who seek to find and kill the player. Uh, the game is then set in a shared universe with the Grand Theft Auto series, because according to some of the people who actually made the game, they do mention the fact that this is somewhat can like very loosely canon to the GTA franchise as a whole. Which means I'm still going to be waiting for Manhunt 3 to be coming out anytime soon. Or at least a remake of Manhunt 1. Alright, so now we're going to be going into the spoiler territory. So, if you haven't played the games, I would recommend uh, you find a second-hand copy of it anywhere online. Or if you can find an online version of the game uh, by any platform necessary. And give it a shot for yourself. <clears throat> so, set in 2003 in Carter City. A journalist reports that about James Earl Cash, a death row inmate who has been recently executed by lethal injection. However, Cash was only sedated and awakens to an unknown uh, voice referring to himself as the director, who gives him instructions through an earpiece. The director calls, uh, promises Cash his freedom, but only if he murders hunters. Uh, gang members who are sent out to kill him in special areas around Carcer City, filmed by CCTV. Uh, Cash's first victims are the Hoods a gang of dangerous criminals and corrupt police officers patrolling an abandoned area of the city. After eliminating them, he is then abducted by the Cerberus, the director's personal security unit, uh, who take him to another part of the Carter City. Uh, while the director monitors his actions, Cash is then forced to kill more criminals across various abandoned locations, encountering a Nazi skinhead gang called the Skins, a sadistic uh, paramilitary uh, group called the War Dogs, who have kidnapped Cash's family to use as bait, an outlaw gang called the Innocents, and consisting of the Hispanic occultist Skulls and the psychopathic Babyfaces, a, and a group of former asylum inmates called the Smileys. Eventually, the director betrays Cash, and after offering, after ordering his family's deaths, uh, he tries to murder him as well as part of the film's climax. Cash then survives the trap and escapes after vowing revenge onto the director. Uh, the remaining war dogs, led by the director's right-hand man, uh, Ramirez, are sent to recapture Cash, and they manage to trap him in the game uh, Cat and Mouse. In the game Cat and Mouse, uh, Cash then prevails and kills Ramirez and his men before being rescued by the journalist, reporting to yeah, reporting him, who reveals that the director is Lionel Scarwe uh, Starkweather, a former film producer who from Los Santos. Who produces snuff film? Who's producing a snuff film ring? Uh, the journalist has then acquired enough evidence against Darkweather uh, to get him convicted, but needs Cash to escort her to her apartment to get it. Meanwhile, Starkweather blackmail uh, Starkweather blackmails corrupt police chief Gary Schaefer into sending his men to kill Cash and the journalist, but the two manage avoiding them. After retrieving the evidence, Cash then tells the journalist to leave the city with it while he goes after Starkweather. Uh, pursued by the police and the SWAT throughout the subway and the streets, Cash is then eventually cornered by a train yard um, and almost uh, similarly executed. He is then saved by, Cer by the Cerberus who kill the SWAT officers and take Cash to Starkweather's mansion so that they can execute him themselves. The Cerberus are then distracted when Pigsy, a chainsaw, a chainsaw wielding maniac who wears a pig's head, breaks free. Cash then escapes and confronts Pigsy in the mansion's upper levels. Unable to fight him directly, Cash uses stealth attacks on Pigsy before tricking him into uh, standing on the grate which then collapses under his weight, allowing Cash to take the chainsaw and finish him off with it. After eliminating the remaining Cerberus, Cash confronts Starkweather in his office and kills him with the chainsaw. The media and police then arrive at the mansion as the journalist expose exposes Starkweather's snuff uh, ring and the police complicity. Uh, leading to Schaefer being criminally prosecuted for corruption. Cash, however, is then nowhere to be found. So that's all the spoilers o over the, um, the looking into Manhunt. So now we're going to be talking about the reception that Manhunt got over the years. Uh, the PlayStation 2 and PC versions of Manhunt received uh, generally favourable reviews, 
while the Xbox version received mixed or average reviews. According to the review um, aggregation website Metacritic, as of March 26, 2008, the Manhunt series was sold, had sold 1.7 million copies worldwide. At the 7th Annual Interactive Achievements Awards, uh, the game was then nominated for the console slash action adventure uh, game of the year. Manhunt then received the Gold Sales Award from the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publis uh, Publishers Association, indicating sales of at least 200,000 copies sold in the UK. Uh, the game, yeah, the game's nihilistic tone and violent nature were then significantly out by critics, as um, representing something unique in the world of video games. GameSpot concluded that it, that like it or not, the game pushes the envelope of the video game violence and shows countless scenes of um, wholly uncensored, heavily stylized carnage. Game Informer praised the PS2 version's audacity and uh, competent technical capabilities, stating that it's a frightening premise. Uh, the pla that places gamers in a psychological impasse. Uh, the crimes that you commit are unspeakable, but yet the gameplay leads to these horrendous acts. is so polished and fierce that it's actually thrilling. IGN then complimented the game uh, on the same console's version, overall challenging, calling it a solid, deep experience for seasoned games, yeah, for seasoned gamers, for some hardcore, challenging games. Edge gave the same console version 8 out of 10, saying like GTA, more than this shock uh, and all within its linear structure, there's a lot of freedom within it, yeah, you know, within which to act. Uh, much more so than the, both the Splinter Cell and Metal Gear Solid 2, the titles of which Manhunt most closely resembles overall. Uh, the game then also received some criticism, uh, certain gameplay, uh, gameplay elements such as the shooting mechanics were called frustrating by Eurogamer, uh, which claimed that more than half of the time uh, the targeting reticle refuses to acknowledge that an oncoming enemy until they're actually virtually in front of you. Uh, GameSport also concurred, noting that the AI is much worse more than the action-oriented levels. 1up.com said uh, that only one quickly became tired and violent, AI quirks and re uh, respective level design, a uh, repetitive design. So now this is where we're going to get into the more meat and bones of Manhunt's um, lineage. So we're going to be talking about the controversies that this m game is more known for. So the controversy surrounding the game primarily um, yeah, stems primarily from the graphic manner in which the player executes enemies. In 2007, former Rockstar employee Jeff Williams revealed that the, even the game's staff was somewhat uncomfortable with the level of violence. There was almost a mutiny at the company over at the game. Williams then explained that the game has just made us feel all icky. Uh, it was all about the violence and it was more realistic violence. We all know there was a way to rationalise it, but we were crossing a line at the time. Uh, the violence in the game then drew the attention of US representative Joe Baca, uh, who was the sponsor of a legalisation to find those who sell adult themed games to players younger than 17 in the US. Bucker said that Manhunt is it's telling kids how to kill someone and it uses vi vicious, sadistic and cruel methods to kill. The media has then drawn into the debate for the example. Uh, the Globe Mall uh, wrote that Manhunt is a, yeah, is a venal disconnect of the genre. Uh, there's no challenge and it's just an assembly line of ritualistic slaughter. It's less of a video game and more of a weapon of personal destruction. And this is about the stacking of bodies. Uh, perhaps the scariest fact of all, Manhunt is a user-friendly, yeah, is so user-friendly that any shop 12-year-old could navigate the sh uh, through the entire game in one sitting. I tried this when I was 12 years old. Hell, I even tried it when I was fucking six. I couldn't do this shit at all. But then again, with my live stream, people watch me on live streams, and no, I am thicker than whale shit. <laughs> Alright, this is where we're going to end up talking about the other major controversy that Manhunt is mostly known for. And feel free to put your opinion on this on whenever you can in the comments. On July 28, 2004, the game was linked to a murder of 14-year-old uh, Stefan Pakir uh, by a 17-year-old friend, Warren LeBlanc, in, Lan in Lancashire, or Leicestershire, in England. Uh, initial media reports claimed that the police had found a copy of Manhunt in LeBlanc's room. Uh, Giselle and Patrick Bakira, the victim's parents, claimed that the game had influenced LeBlanc and played the role. 
In the Myrna, the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association offered sympathy to the Bakir family, but then later rejected any connection between the game and the murder. The ELSPA also noted that the game was rated 18 by the British Board of Film Classification and was not intended for minors. Due to the controversy, the game was then removed from shelves by some vendors, and this included ga um, branches such as Game and Dixon's. Uh, in response, Rockstar also reiterated that the game was intended for adults and denied any link in the murder. Uh, media speculation of a potential ban on the game was then increased. At, yeah, ban for the game increased the demand for a physical. Yeah, for it to be. Um, if I can't even speak. It had also been intended. Oh, fuck, no. Media speculation of a potential ban on the game increased demand for it at physical and online retailers. Giselle Pakira. Uh, stated that her disappointment over the increased I interest in the game. On July 30th, 2004, American attorney Jack Thompson, an advocate and advocated against um, video game violence in video games, uh, claimed that to have um, warned Rockstar uh, prior to the game's release that it could inspire copycat killings. On August 2nd, 2004, it was also reported that the Bakiras hi had hired Thompson to represent them in a 50 million pounds wrongful death claim against Sony Computer Entertainment and Rockstar Games. Uh, that day, the police had officially denied any link between the game and the murder, citing a drug-related robbery as the motive and revealing that the game was n that had been found in Bakira's bedroom uh, was not LeBlanc's as originally reported. The presenting judge then placed sole responsibility with LeBlanc after sentencing him to life. Uh, the Bakira's case against Sony and Rockstar was then dropped soon thereafter. Uh, there was then a renewed controversy after the announcement of Manhunt 2 in February 2007, with the Bakiris condemning its release. Rockstar's parent company, Take Two Interactive, also issued a statement that the judge defense uh, prosecution at, and Lakeshire Police in the case had then refuted any connection in the game. Jack Thompson unsuccessfully attempted to have Manhunt 2 banned, claiming that Take Two had then lied about the incident and the police were correct in a certain of the game that had belonged to Pakira. So now we're going to talk about the legal status of Manhunt as it where it still stands to this day. In New Zealand the game was then banned on December 11th 2003 with possession deemed an offence. Bill Hastings the chief censor stated that it's a game where only, well, the only thing you do is kill everybody you see. You have to at least um, acquiesce in these murders and possibly um, tolerate or even move towards enjoying them, which is injurious to the public good. In 2023, uh, the office uh, reconsidered Manhunt to be classified in R18. Uh, in Australia, the game was initially allowed under the MA15 Plus classification, but this decision was then reversed by Australian Classification Board in September 2004, after an appeal by the Attorney uh, General Philip Ruddock as a consequence, the game was then effectively banned, mandating a recall of all copies still being sold in stores. Before its recall, Manhunt had already sold 18,000 units in Australia alone in that year. In Canada, following a, me a meeting in Toronto on December 22, 2003, between Hastings and officials from the Ontario Ministry of Consumer and Business Services, Manhunt had then became the first video game in Ontario to be classified as a film and was restricted to adults on February 3rd, 2004. Apart from Ontario, however, Manhunt had a title and no classification problems elsewhere in North America. The British Columbia Film Classification Office reviewed the game after the controversy in Ontario and deemed it mature rating by the ESRB to be appropriate. In Germany, the Amstreit in Munich classified for the PlayStation 2 version of Manhunt on July 19th, 2004 for violation of German Penal Code 131, representation of violence. According to the court, the game was then portrays the killing of humans as fun. They also said that it glorified um, vigilantism, which they considered harmful. Um, all other the games, uh, all other versions got indexed, resulting in the game still being banned in Germany to this day, which is completely unfucking surprising. <laughs> Uh, then we got the the Steam release and crack protection uh, to combat pi yeah to combat piracy. The retail version contained two layers of digital rights management, the secure ROM system, and several uh, game breaking mechanisms that are activated in the secure ROM is missing. Uh, to ship the game to Steam without 
uh, the third party DRM, Rockstar Games re-released it with an exciting crack by Razor 1911. Shush! 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 Anyway, as this was uncovered in 2010, the company quickly released a new version of the retail release uh, with its only secure ROM removed. Uh, the property then measured yeah, the property measures were not then addressed, leading to leading to a broken version being sold on Steam. Prior to 2023, the crack protection mechanisms such as the gates and doors were not working properly operating systems. However, it was discovered that Steam had released the crack protection measures active despite being an official release due to incomplete uh, removal of the DRM. Uh, reviews on Steam then appeared complaining about the anti-piracy measures and originally being sold a cracked version of the game. This version still remains unaltered as of September 2023. I've got it on Steam and I bought it for fairly cheaply on there and it it's still unplayable. Like to this day I've looked everywhere online trying to fix it. I could not find any decent source on how to fix the game at all. Uh, so we then got my final verdict on Manhunt. Manhunt it, as a game overall, it's a solid attempt of, for Rockstar to do something outside of their original comfort zone. With obviously Rockstar mostly being known for making Grand Theft Auto, making the Grand Theft Auto series, with obviously GTA 6 coming out very, very well in the next year or so, uh, which we've been told it has been delayed. I believe it's been delayed to 2026 anyway. But I feel like we should t take a step back from the general Rockstar games. Uh, well, the general stuff that Rockstar is known for, mostly being only GTA at this point, but I feel like we should just go back to a time where Rockstar should try and do more stuff outside of GTA. They, in my opinion, personally, Manhunt is a solid game. There's loads of potential behind it. They actually, they potentially had a decent franchise laid there out front on their hands. They could do a similar thing with Saw, but, you know, they'll try and do a little bit of a new kind of game-ish, or like add like a new version, or like make slight alterations each October, leading up to Halloween. Uh, but instead, they completely dropped the ball with only Manhunt 2. I might cover Manhunt 2 at some point in the future, um, but then only time will tell. I do like Manhunt 1. It's a staple in the gaming community, and it is also a, a massive implant. Well, not implement. Um, trying to think what's the word for it. Um, a big staple in the controversy in video games as a whole. Like this definitely goes up there with like the launch of Fallout 76, um, the pre-order bonus, a lot of the pre-order uh, limited editions of um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, among many other controversies in games, uh, which you could probably find somewhere on Wikipedia anyway. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I can really say about Manhunt as a whole. If you guys want to check it out, there's probably some old gameplay videos that you could probably find, or if you still got your PS2 like me, dust off an old copy of Manhunt 2 and play it. You could probably find it somewhere cheaply on a second-hand market. Um, or if you're really, really lucky, you probably might end up finding a completely uncensored, unaltered version of Manhunt, which I do think is still illegal. Even in the UK, I believe it is still illegal to own. But without that, without all that said, um, yeah, check out Manhunt if you ever get the chance to. Um, but I really wish at some point, um, yeah, Rockstar, I feel like should just drop GTA 6 in its entirety and only focus on probably giving us like either Manhunt 3 or at least do a re-release of, like a proper re-release of Manhunt 1 or even do Bully 2. People have been asking for this shit for fucking years. Or hell, even if you can do something with GTA, do a fucking remake or a re-release of the original three GTA games. GTA 1, GTA 2, GTA London. Fuck it. Do it. <laughs> but yeah, G um, Rockstar, you clearly don't know what... You guys don't know what you're doing. I don't... But to be honest, I kind of dropped the ball with GTA as a whole. Mostly because of GTA 5. I'm not a big fan of GTA 5. I do find it to be repetitive and completely irritating. Mostly because of the online mode mostly killed it for me. They struck gold with Red Dead Redemption 2 but then completely dropped it with the online shit. Mostly because they stopped caring about it at that point. But enough with my ranting. 
I've been Bloody Jack. This has been my retrospective on Manhunt One. Let me know what your thoughts are about Manhunt in the description. Uh, no, in the description, in the comments down below. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit that notifications bell in case that you want to be up to date on anything that I upload onto the channel. Also, don't forget to go in the description down below if you're watching this on PC or on your on the YouTube app. You can find the links down in the description down below, where you can find me on my Instagram, my Twitch, my Twitter, and my Facebook page, where I'll be uploading on there, well, I'll be posting on there as regularly as I possibly can. I live stream at least once a week. Uh, even if you miss the live streams, I upload everything on there onto my YouTube channel as it is. Uh, slightly edited, uh, more condensed versions, filling out dead air, really. But, other than that, I will see you lovely lot in the, peep, in the big PP Nation next time.